Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's well. Thank you once again for tuning in. Before we get into all the news, make sure if you're new, you subscribe to the channel. If you're returning, make sure you do drop a like on the video. Now, some news come out yesterday from a source called Prem Inside. Now, this guy practically gets everything on Tottenham absolutely spot on. He says it three or four days before the likes of Romano, Ornstein. He says it before it happens. And he said yesterday evening, Gift Auburn has agreed personal terms with Tottenham. No official bid yet. Tottenham focused on player players out first. Auburn is willing to wait. And then as you can see, he replied to his tweet back from August the 5th. He was the first person to talk about Tottenham being heavily linked um, to Gift Auburn. So he brought up a tweet. Do you know, I'll, even, I'll bring it on the screen just so you guys can see. Um, there you go. He put it out, this tweet, on August the 5th. Gift Auburn is related to his agent. He would have no issues agreeing personal terms with Tottenham. Since August 5th, all the links have broke that Tottenham are incredibly interested uh, in this. And then he broke the news yesterday that Giff Auburn um, has agreed personal terms with uh, Tottenham. No official bid yet, as you can see there. Uh, but Tottenham focused on players out first. Now, we'll come to the players out in a minute. But Gift Auburn looks the real deal, as we said yet in yesterday's uh, Monday's video. Yesterday, Mon Monday, Monday's video, yeah. We spoke about him. He looks the real deal. Uh, has got a fantastic goal scoring record. And I genuinely think he would be a fantastic addition to what we need. Um, can score goals, good in the air, fairly quick, young player, 21 years of age. And at £25 million in today's market, that's an absolute steal for a player of his ability. Um, in terms of the player out list, now, I looked on transfer market yesterday. Um we have got three or four players that I think we could we could raise a good amount of funds for. And one of them is Undon Bele. This guy is miles away from getting anywhere near the first team. The manager's only been here a month and does not clearly rate him. As we've said many, many times on this channel, as well as other people have said, he has got all the technical ability in the world, but he doesn't have the work ethic and he doesn't want to be there. If we can sell Undon Bele... The likes of Galatasaray, um, I think it was Fenerbahce as well, and maybe a Spanish club, heavily linked to him. Galatasaray will prefer to pay £11 million for him. Just get rid. This window, all we've done, besides Harry Kane, is sell Harry Winks and loan out Joe Roden. We need to get rid of so many players at this football club. It is honestly insane. Big question marks about Eric Dyer's future for me. Get rid. Big question marks um, about Ndon Bele. Get rid. You know, Hugo Lloris, uh, Dan Kilpatrick said earlier today, uh, I'll bring the tweet up just so you guys can see. He said earlier today that Spurs, um, I think it was, I think it was uh, Dan Kilpatrick. He said earlier today that um, Lazio were expressing some interest in um, Hugo Lloris and for me I just get rid here we go Hugo Lloris is very close to joining Lazio and that is coming out from Demazio. now obviously uh, Hugo Lloris his contract expires next season so there should be a small fee um, involved for the goalkeeper obviously been at Tottenham practically the last well since I don't know the last decade something like that um, his contract expires June 30th 2024. So another player we need to get rid of. In terms of our, our overall squad, looking through, you know, obviously we've got Lloris needs to go. Davinson Sanchez, I've seen a couple of, I've seen a, a hot, an okay performance when he come on. And now there's people out here coming out saying, oh, but he needs to be involved in the football club. He needs to, listen, if we could sell Lloris, Davinson Sanchez, Eric Dyer and Undon Bele and raise some more funds, um, I, I I would 100% get rid. Another problem, I don't think it's, it, it's an important problem, but I don't think it's the priority at the moment. The priority for me is a centre-back, a DM and another striker. But 
there is big concerns over this right back situation. We, me, Sean, and Savas spoke about it yesterday. Um, we've got the likes of Jed Spence, or should I say Jed Bench. We've got the likes of Pedro Poro. And we've got the likes of Emerson Royale. Now, Emerson Royale, one of his biggest problems for me is his positioning uh, as a right back. He's okay defensively. He's not great going forward, but he's positioning at certain times in 1v1s. He's had some good games. I remember him having a very good game against Jack Grealish from, um, when we played Man City, but big questions have got to be asked. Pedro Poro, this guy is awful defensively, great going forward. And Jed Spence apparently is on the out list. So do we need to sign another right back as well? I don't know. It just annoys me when I see the likes of I see the likes of Aston Villa going and getting deals done. Since we sold Harry Kane to Bayern Munich, Chelsea have signed Lavia, agreed a deal for Elise, and permanently signed Casado in the same time we sold Harry Kane. So in the last five or six days, they've now brought in three. Well, about to, they've brought in two players, about to bring in the third. Um, also, big question to Marks about um, about. Um, what is the guy's name? Troy Parrott. What's happening with him? Um, he's been heavily linked to move away to a, to a Dutch side in the area of VC. Another player to get rid. Uh, looking at the rest of the squad, Ryan Sessignon, another player. Get rid. Not good enough for this football club. Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. He's one of the midfielders I've spoken about many, many times. And genuinely, we need to get rid of this guy. But we're going to come on to Eze in a minute. But if we could get 30 million for Hoiberg, 11 million for Ndombele, a few million for Larice, um, 8 or 9 million for Dyer, Sanchez another 10 million. All of a sudden, you've got 60 million quid sitting there for players that aren't even involved in our first team. You know, it's how does every team in the Premier League manage to sell their Deadwood and yet we don't? Is it because our Deadwood's that bad or are we just that bad when it comes to selling players? Um, I wanted to talk about um, Eze. Big reports coming out that we are um, we are we are a big admirer um, of Eze. Ryan Taylor um, from the Daily Express said yesterday: Spurs are firm admirers of Crystal Palace's Eze. Sources have not ruled out a surprise bid Tottenham from Tottenham in the coming weeks. A player that I would snap. Up in a heartbeat. Big, big fan of Eze. I think he's a top, top player. Um, genuinely, I think he adds goals, assists, flair. Essentially, you imagine we've got an attacking options of Lo Celso, Madison, Eze, Kulu, Solomon, Sun, Richarlison, Valise, Auburn, Perisic and Hill. That is more than enough goals and creativity in our team. But Eze, for me, is the real deal. I think he is a top, top player. Very good in the, in the first game of the season, away to Sheffield United. The only thing I will say is Crystal Palace have just sold, or just agreed to sell um, Elise to Chelsea. So are they going to sell Elise and Eze in the same window? I can't see it happening. Also, Decore, 50 million, heavily linked to a move away to Liverpool. Are they going to sell Decore, Eze and Elise? Probably their three best players, or three of their best players. They've got no Zaha now. Guahi is being linked to a move away heavily to other football clubs as well. Are they going to have that big of a transition this window? I don't know. Um, Dan Kilpatrick has said, um, Spurs are in talks with Lazio over a deal for Hugo Lloris. Tottenham would ideally like a fee for Lloris, who is still a year remaining on a two-year contract agreed last summer, but the Italian club are pushing to sign him on a free. Obviously, I'd rather us get the fee, but we still got a lot to do this window. We've got a massive, massive game on Saturday against Manchester United, the late kickoff, 5.30pm. And the Spurs Express, uh, the club have actually put up a picture of Emerson Royale and Cuti Romero. And Cuti Romero doesn't look like he has a concussion there. So could that be that he's going to be fully fit and firing against Manchester United? I hope so. I really, really do. 
if we have to play the likes of Davis and Sanchez against Manchester United, for me, that is a big, big worry. Davis and Sanchez, you know, everyone's going to say, oh, but yeah, he had a good game. He had a good game. Listen, a couple of good... Sorry, a couple of good games for Tottenham in the last X amount of time for me. It does not cover up the absolute madness that this guy has done in in in, in recent you know in recent times. I don't think he's good enough. Um, I really don't. There's also a lot of transfer talk around Duncan, not Duncan Ferguson, around Ferguson from Brighton. Now, good good player for me. Don't get it wrong. People would say, oh, he's the closest thing we could get to Harry Kane. I, I, I look at that and think he's a very good player. But the one thing is, Brighton have just agreed, have just sold Cancelo, not Cancelo, Casado to Chelsea. Evan Ferguson is 18 years of age. Transfer market to Code UK value at 30 million euros. Brighton are one of the best footballing clubs in recent years at selling players. The likes of Kukurea, Ben White. Trossard, Bissouma, Mulpe, Casado, you know, Dan Byrne. I mean, who else have they sold in recent years? They've sold a few more players and they are excellent when it comes to replacing them. I think right now, Brighton are going to want anything of 50 million plus, maybe even 60 or 70 million for Ferguson. Got a bunch of potential, the Irish, the Irish forward. He's played one game this season, scored one goal. In terms of his slats last year, he played 39 game, uh, 30 games and got 11 goals and four assists. So nearly one goal contribution every two games for the 18-year-old. That They are going to want an astronomical fee. And right now, I think personally, as much as we do need a striker, I'd rather go and sign Gift Orban, who is 21, 22 years of age, bring him into the football club. Um Listen, they, they, uh, that, that's what I would rather do. Um, but th there's players out there, you know, we haven't got to have this elite scouting network that Brighton do. We've just got to be smart. And the last thing I want to finish on is I want to talk about Vicario because he is getting so much hate for his performance against Brentford. People have got to accept that he is not David Raya and he never will be David Raya. David Raya has unfortunately gone to join Arsenal. Now, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Bright, Brentford didn't want to sell him to us at the time. Arsenal come in and, and they were more leaning towards getting rid of him. For me, look at both the goals we conceded. What is he supposed to do against the penalty? You know, you can't judge him from conceding the penalty. And the second goal, he probably would have th saved that, but he gets deflected off Van de Ven, which is one of those things. And it changes the direction of the football and it makes it, you know, 2-1 at the time to, to Brentford. Apart from that, um, he had four saves in the game. Apart from that, a couple of good saves. But I just feel the hate is, is absolutely, completely unnecessary. Like, yeah, it's the cheaper buy than buying Raya at the time, but it's absolutely bonkers absolutely bonkers how much hate this guy is getting. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, I, I wanted David Raya as well. But to come out and just give him pelter after pelter after pelter after pelter after pelter is absolutely insane. And, and the last thing I want to, I want to finish on is where do Tottenham's midfield of the likes of James Madison, Casado, and Benson Core, where does that rank in terms of Premier League midfielders? Um, you know, if you look at midfielders, we, we've signed the likes of Benton Core, Madison, and Bissouma for just over a hundred million. You know, Chelsea have spent two hundred million plus on Fernandez, Casado, and Lavia. Where Arsenal have spent a hundred plus on Rice, Partey, and Odegaard. You know, Manchester United have done a hundred plus on Bruno Fernandez, Mount, and and uh, Casemiro. Let me know down below where do you think Tottenham's midfield ranks in terms of 
our midfield? Because I think it's an interesting conversation. I really do. I really do think it's think it's an interesting conversation. I think in terms of those sort of purchases, I think they're good buys, all, all, every single one of them, especially the likes of James Madison. But once again, you know, fans are coming out with, you know, our midfield's dead compared to rivals. Not our fans, but rival fans. I just think it's unnecessary. Like, for $107 million to get Benton Court, Madison and Basuma done, I think that's very, very good. It might even be less than $107 million. But look, we are going to wrap up. Big up to every single person down below. We will be back live at 6.30 with Sean and Sava um, <clears throat> for the Wednesday Spurs show. If you're new to the channel, like I said, make sure you go down, drop a like on the video and subscribe. Big up to every single person who's been showing some support. We just hit 15.2K. Now we're steaming towards 15.3K. We got everyone down below. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon. Thank you all for watching. I am... Um,